Welcome to another 30-minute workshop presented by the Student Success Center at Eastern Illinois University. In this session, we will discuss several strategies to help you ace that test. By the end of the presentation, you will have examined your own habits for studying, learn the best and worst ways to study, and learn new concepts regarding study strategies. For this workshop, you will need a pen or pencil and a blank sheet of paper for taking notes. There are not any required handouts, However, you will definitely want to copy down the seven-day study plan, as well as other test-taking strategies. Pause the podcast, get the materials you need, and rejoin me. The concepts we will cover are the worst ways to study so you know what you are doing wrong, the best ways to study, the seven-day study plan, and other test-taking strategies. If at any point you need to view a slide for a longer period of time, you may pause the podcast and rejoin me when you are ready. Let's begin by looking at some of the study strategies you may be doing now. Answer the following questions honestly to yourself. When asked each question, answer it as if you do this or do not do this. Before every test or quiz, do you begin studying the night before a test? While you are studying, do you sit in a crowded area or have the TV on? Before each test, do you plan on studying for a longer period of time, but end up cramming all the material in your head in a short period of time? If you answered yes to any of the questions, you are practicing some of the worst ways to study. Here are some sure ways to perform at your lowest ability and do your worst work. Waiting until the last minute to study for an exam will ensure a poor grade. It is difficult for our brains to remember a ton of information at one time. Think of it this way. Can a professional athlete wait till the last minute to train for an Olympic event? No way. His or her muscles will never be ready in time. Your brain is the same way. You can't wait until the last minute to study or your brain will never be ready for a test. Studying while the TV is on is a major distraction. Usually it is fine to study with low music, but a television offers entertainment that you must think th thoroughly about to understand the scenario. If you are devoting part of your brain time to thinking about a television show, you are only devoting part of your brain to studying, and this will result in poor reviewing and memory for your exam. Study in a crowded area or with a large group of people will also distract you from thoroughly reviewing and retaining information. If you have distractions, you will never be able to focus. Finally, cramming all night long with no sleep is a sure way to destroy a good grade on an exam. Think of the example about the Olympic athlete. They cannot cram their training in one night, and neither can you. The brain does not work that way. Additionally, your brain needs rest just like an athlete's muscles. If you overuse your brain all night by cramming information and it does not rest, you are ensuring an overload on your brain. Let's continue with my questions about your study habits. Answer the following questions honestly to yourself. When asked each question, answer it as if you do this or do not do this. When you study, do you make note cards or rewrite your notes to help you retain and remember information? When you study, do you join small study groups or attend class review sessions? During your study time, do you schedule small breaks into your study session? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are on the right track to mastering successful study strategies. Here are some sure ways to perform at your highest ability and do your best work. Review your notes daily. If you spend an hour or more after each class meeting and review your notes, you will easily retain the information taught that day and previous days. The more you review material, the more natural it is for you to remember it, and the better you will do on your next exam. Make flashcards to continuously quiz yourself on material. Throughout the semester, make new flashcards as you learn new material, and study all past notes and new note cards to master class material. While studying, avoid any distractions. You should designate a certain area as your study area. Try the library or another quiet location free of distractions such as TV and friends. Get in a routine of going to this place every time you study. 
Having a consistent place to study will encourage your body and mind to become used to this area, and you will naturally study better. While you study, try to anticipate questions that may be on the test. Base these questions on previous tests or quizzes, material emphasized in class, and your professor's style. If you must study for a long period of time, implement breaks to give your mind a rest. Try a schedule like studying for 45 minutes, breaking for 15 minutes, and studying for 45 minutes again. Repeat this schedule while you study. Before each class, study material you have previously learned, and after each class, study new material. By studying directly before or after class, you are immediately reviewing information, which will make your exam much easier. The more you review material, the more natural it is for you to retain and repeat during the test time. Form a small study group for studying. Typically, individuals and study groups have the same agenda, to get a good grade. By studying with people in class, you will be able to help each other out on understanding information and work as a team to achieve the highest grade. Ask your professor for help. If you are unsure of material on an exam, ask the professor what they recommend to review. Also, ask the professor if they have any recommendations for the best ways to study the material. And don't forget to ask your professor what the test format will be. You will want to know if it is a multiple choice, true, false, or essay exam. Finally, one of the best ways to study is to get a tutor. If you are having trouble understanding or retaining information in a particular topic, find a tutor. This individual will give you tips on understanding information and studying on for information. If you are interested in a tutor, visit the Student Success Center website to view a complete list of campus-wide tutoring schedules. Here are some typical student thoughts about studying and some survival tips to overcome them. Some students think their friends will judge them or think they are stupid if they get a tutor. Here's a survival tip. Think of it from the opposite perspective. What will they think if you fail a class because you refuse to get a tutor? Realize you can't please everyone and no matter what you choose, someone is going to judge you. I'm sure you would rather be called a nerd than fail a course, right? Asking for help is smart, not stupid. Think of the example of the Olympic athlete. What if they never asked for help or never had a personal trainer? They wouldn't be an Olympic athlete. Your studies are the same way. Another typical thought of students is they only need to start studying once the test day gets closer. Here's a survival tip. Start now. Set up regular study hours so you are learning the information throughout the semester and aren't forcing yourself to memorize it last minute. There is a reason classes last for a semester. There is too much information to cover in a few days. So why do you think you can learn it all in a few nights of cramming? If you study daily, you will have a better chance of passing your test and achieving a higher GPA. Here are some more questions about studying. How many days in advance did you begin studying in an upcoming exam? Three, five, or seven days? The correct answer is seven days. While studying, is it better to study the exact same material each day? True or false? If you answered false, you are correct. Hopefully you answered both questions correctly, but if you didn't, you should take notes on the seven day study plan. Here is the seven day study plan. You should practice this plan before each exam throughout your semesters. Before every test, you should begin studying seven days before the exam. And on each of these days, you should plan to study for at least two hours a day. On the next few slides, I will show you what to study each day. You will probably want to take notes, so make sure you have a pen and paper ready. Day 1. Spend your first day organizing all of your notes and materials. Make an outline of all your study materials. Make sure you don't have any notes missing. If you do have notes missing, ask a student in your class to borrow theirs or ask your professor. Once your notes are organized, study important material first. For example, anything your professor has emphasized in class or stated would be on the test, any highlighted material, etc. So on day one, organize your notes and materials and study the most important material. 
Day 2. Spend Day 2 reviewing material emphasized only in lectures. Anytime you were in the classroom for a lecture, study all this material, including notes you took, PowerPoints, and handouts. So on Day 2, only study lecture materials. Day 3. On Day 3, only study textbook material. Any required readings in the class should be reviewed on this day. Any chapters that were discussed for the class should, should be reviewed on this day. So on day three, only study textbook material. Day four. On day four, combine the lecture and textbook material you studied on days two and three. Review all this material together and make connections between your notes and your textbooks. If you find that you have questions, ask your professor immediately. So on day four, review all material. Day five. On day five, repeat day two by only reviewing your lecture notes. Remember, it is important to switch up the material you study each day. You should not study the same material every day, but switch between lecture notes and textbook materials while studying for an exam. So on day five, only review your lecture notes. Day six. On day six, repeat day three by only reviewing your textbook materials. Once again, it is important to switch up your studying technique and focus on different material each day. So on day six, only review your textbook materials. Day seven. On day seven, repeat day four by reviewing all of your study material again. This day, you should look at both your lecture notes and textbook materials. Spend extra time focusing on areas that you have had trouble understanding throughout your study process. At this point, you should be including all related material that should be reviewed for your test. So on day seven, you should review all materials for the test. Once you have completed your seven day study plan, you are ready for your exam, but there are things you should consider on exam day. You need at least six hours of sleep the night before the test. Do not stay up all night studying for your exam. You need to rest and relax your brain before you test it. Also make sure you eat breakfast or lunch before your exam, but do not take your exam on a full stomach. Think of your body as a car. Can a car run without fuel? No, and neither can you. But don't eat directly before your exam. Remember how your family told you not to swim for at least 30 minutes after you've eaten? Well, think of test taking the same way. Do not take a test on a full stomach because your body is busy breaking down the food and your body will be tired, whether you know it or not. And finally, think positively. Do not go into an exam thinking you're going to fail because you probably will if you believe it. Instead, go into the exam believing you are going to do well because you spend the last seven days preparing for it and you know the material. Be confident, it will help you succeed. Now that you know how to study for an exam, let's look at each type of test you may encounter. Like I said before, you should be anticipating questions on the exam based on your teacher's style. There are three options, multiple choice tests, true-false tests, and essay tests, or a combination of the three. Let's look at the tips for each type. You may want to take some notes on this too. For multiple choice tests, consider the following tips. Cross out all answers that are sure to be wrong. This will help you focus on the few answers you think may be right without talking yourself into something that is for sure wrong. This will also create a process of elimination and will help you find the best answer. Watch out for answers that say all of the above or B and C only. When you see answers like this, don't just mark them, but actually make sure if all the answers are right or if only B and C are right. Remember, these answers are here for a reason, but don't let them confuse you. Be confident with your first choice. Remember to follow your gut. Chances are your brain made a quick connection to the answer in question, and you should listen to it. Do not talk yourself out of answers. In reality, we can talk ourselves out of the right answer just as easily as we can talk ourselves out of the wrong answer, so trust your first choice. Finally, look for grammatical clues. If definitions are not word for word what you studied, start breaking down sentences and making grammatical connections 
between the answer and the question. Now let's look at tips for true and false tests. Like I said before, always trust your first choice. If your gut is telling you to pick one, trust it and do not tuck yourself out of answers too often. Avoid looking for patterns. No matter how badly we want our professors to spell something out with a Scantron sheet, they aren't doing it. Do not look for patterns in the test. Make each question stand alone and don't let other answers influence each question. Pay attention to qualifying terms like always, never, every time, and so on. Make sure the answer is true to what it states. Is grass always green? No, it's not always green, sometimes it's brown. Pay attention to these words. Finally, follow this common rule. If there is an exception, the answer is false. Even if the exception only happens once in a trillion times, there is still an exception, so the answer is false. Now let's look at some tips for essay tests. The best way to study for an essay test is to anticipate possible questions. If you know what material is covered on the exam, try to make up essay questions to quiz yourself while studying. Usually your teacher will tell you specific topics you will have to write about, and most often they will give you a list of essay questions and tell you that some of them will be on the test. To prepare yourself, make an outline of the answer to each essay question. By preparing outlines, you will already know what you want to discuss in your essay before you begin your exam. And after you have completed your essay, proofread your sentences. This is very important. As a college student, your professors expect you to be able to communicate through writing, so make sure your words are spelled right and your sentences make sense. Do not make small errors like misspellings or punctuation. Here are some more test-taking strategies and tips. Read the directions twice. Make sure you know what you are expected to do for each section of the test. Look over the test before answering any questions. It is important to see what a test is like before you start taking it so you don't come up on any surprises that may freak you out during the exam. Look for hidden answers. Oftentimes, one question may state the answer for another, so pay attention to these connections. Try to block out any distractions like coughing or tapping. Try to focus only on your test. If you need to close your ears to focus on a question, then do it. If you have a question during a test, ask it. Do not be intimidated or embarrassed. If an asked question gets you a correct answer on the exam, it was worth it. If you come across a difficult question, put a star next to it and move on. Do not spend too much time on a question that has you stuck because you will be wasting time when you could be answering questions you know. Come back to the tough questions later. Finally, if you have time left after you finish, review all of your answers before you turn in a new test. Make sure you have not left any questions without answers. Another common thought among college students is that if they fail their first test, they will step it up for the next one. In all honesty, this hardly ever happens. If you fail the first test, it is an immediate sign that you need to seek instruction from your professor or tutor. Consult with your professor if you are having problems with the course, and especially if you fail a test. Remember, the better you do on a test, the less hard you will have to work to keep your grade up. Before you are finished with this workshop, you should check out the Student Success Center website for more information on study strategies or other skills. We have several handouts that give more detail about different study strategies that are useful to you and will ensure success at EIU. This concludes the Ace That Test workshop by the Student Success Center. If you have any questions about test taking skills or other skills, please contact the SSC at 581-6696 or stop by for a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of our staff in Ninth Street Hall. Also, check out any of our other podcasts while you are here. Good luck on your journey to success. Thank you.